Today's video log is uh, installing the NPT. I'm not sure what to put on the threads, so I'm not going to put anything for now and see if I have any leaks. But uh, this is the anti siphon valve, and I think this is uh, 3 eighths of an inch. It's the size that's stamped on this uh, elbow. And uh, when I bought the tank, the people at Sunshine Marine were good enough to give me the the uh, 90 here that was stainless steel. And of course, I put it away somewhere, and now I can't find it. And these threads are NPT threads, which is a plumbing thread. But anyway, uh trying to get that to face the other way here. So, uh, hopefully I'll put a pair of pliers on here and be able to uh, get, it to, get it to tighten down a little bit more in the direction I want it to be. That's as far as I can get it. So, I'll do this. And then, do that. I am not real happy with having to do this, but it is the regulation, as far as I know. have these. I don't really know why it's necessary. I just do that. And then we put the hose on there and uh, tighten the clamp. And of course the hose is uh, looks like it needs a new end down it. It's kind of cracked. And we'll do that. Cut the end off and tighten it down. And that's your uh, anti-siphon valve. And uh, hopefully it'll all work out real nice. And I may have to put something on the threads later if I got any leaks. Uh, and I'll check for leaks once I get it running. Okay, I got the blower on, I got the water on. And I'm ready to see if I can get her to crank up with the anti-siphon valve installed. And uh, so I will turn that just a little bit more when I got a bigger wrench on it. We've got the clamp tight. It's on the barb enough. Can't get it any further. And I'm missing the clamp on the water separating fuel filter, but put that on later. Let's see if I can get it to start. Oh, hadn't been running in a long while, so weeks and weeks. Well, that's promising. I got the spark tester in there still. From the last time I worked on it. Good idea to run these engines often. Because every time you run them, you lubricate them. If you don't have that choke set right, it's going to be fiddly on you. Either too much or not enough. Turn the blower off now. See any gas leaks here? Either at the tank or at the connection between the elbow and here. Uh, 
sometimes I touch up the idle screw here on the side of the carburetor. Bump the choke a little bit. Try to keep the idle on this around 650, 700. A little bit too much there. Bring this in until it kills it. Then you back it out go clockwise with it so it gets lumped up like that. Ugh. And of course you do that with the boat in the water. It's a final adjustment. And put it in gear. like, I don't know, 40 PSI, 38 PSI, oil pressure, half a tank of gas. Go back to the idle. Two, four, six. That's around 600, 650. Stern drives don't like it too high in RPM. into reverse like butter. And I put it in and out of gear to stir up the oil in the stern drive. Voltage is right at 13. Call this a success so far. I've got a lot to do here, so I'm just going to run it for a bit and let it cool down, put the tarp back on it, top off the batteries. That'll be it for today. Boats have problems with these anti-siphon valves. It's a check valve. It lets gas only come out of the tank, just when it go in one way. I did adjust this when it comes up to temperature, 160 degrees. When the choke opens, maybe we'll need a little more gas. Going counterclockwise with the adjustment screw and the burn curb. Make it a little bit richer. That's enough for one day on muffs. I'd love to put it in the water, but with the virus, I can't put it in the water. Parks, all the boat ramps are closed that I know of. And I don't have time to put it in the water anyway. And got two group 24 batteries here and a switch. And so I just turn the switch off to power it down and uh, pretty hot out here right now come out later when it's cool and put that cover back on 
That's it for today, this video log.